A lot of you guys didn't understand what part 3 is supposed to be about. It's not just about a political religious allegory wherein it talks about real world problems, but it's actually about innate human problems. Okay. Sure, it mentions a lot about um, the religious and political allegory of modern day religion, territory disputes, and a lot, a lot of political disputes in today's time, but in the form of fictionalized countries. Except for the Philippines, it's the only non almost non fictionalized country where it has it shares the same name with the country it's based on. Because <laughs> I'm Filipino. <laughs> But the point is, um, a lot of it was probably like found offensive. I don't know if it was, but people probably didn't like it because it felt too real. I think, I don't know, or lost interest in it because it wasn't as bizarre and wacky as part two, which was awesome, by the way. Wanna check it out, check it out. Part 3 is supposed to focus mostly on Saint Jojo and his relationship with two women, a room warning star, which is a completely fictional character. She's completely fictional. She's supposed to represent a darker side of me. Yeah. And the other one is Annalisa Zeppeli. She represents um, not a darker side of me. The side of me who wants to redeem itself. And finally, say Jojo, who's just me trying to choose who I want to be. You understand, right? Now, it also explores uh, my experiences with relationships. Or more likely the lack thereof. It's more like a... It's, it's a fan fiction. Who cares, guys? But... What's very important is that... All these three are actually based on me. And that Saint Jojo is supposed to... Originally, the original versions, the novel versions, are based on... Uh, people I've met before. People I've fallen in love with. That's not true in the manga version. The manga version... They're all just me. The manga version focuses on how Annalisa is supposed to be a side of me that hurt someone. Betrayed someone. I've never actually, I've never done that in that degree as Annalisa, Zeppeli. But I've done something similar. <laughs> and I'm ashamed of it. But I haven't cheated because I, I technically haven't been in a relationship yet. But kind of did something similar. <laughs> and I'm not proud of it. But it's fine, I guess, because y you see, you see, I'm trying to like defend myself. <laughs> it's not okay. Because clearly that person had feelings for me and nah, I hurt them. <laughs> That's not cool. That's what Annalisa is. A person trying to redeem herself. Basically, Saint Jojo has two choices. Either he chooses to redeem other people, or he chooses his living in his mistakes. Aurora. That's what Aurora is. She's supposed to be his greatest mistake. Think about it. Aurora essentially acted only evil just because he rejected her. That's something I could have become. If he chose her, they, they would have been toxic. Actually, no. My original idea was that if he chose her in the past, she would never have transformed into something evil. But that's the thing. Miguel would have become evil. You know why? He never loved her. Hmm. Never loved that side of her. So this character, Miguel, Saint Jojo, would eventually become torn apart with these two women, these two sides of me. Would he choose redemption? Would he choose to redeem others, to forgive others? 
or would he choose the other side where he would like join Aurora and destroy everything? Now that's an interesting premise. For me at least. Cause Saint Jojo hasn't you guys say that he was the he's the most righteous character, right? He's not. You've seen him in the past. You've seen him kill people. In the, the fictional character, yeah. You've seen him kill people. I don't kill people, jeez. But you've seen him kill people, right? You've seen him torture others with his hell fire. And you've seen him mock Miguel and bully Miguel. Sure, they bullied each other, but the original Miguel, yeah, he, he bullies him all the time. He dominates over him. He's not a good person, is he? But he does have good faith in what he does. He's not a good person, but he does have good faith in what he's doing. There's a difference. There totally is. The problem is, people often confuse good faith with good doing good acts. Good acts are acts that are good. Doing something that's good. Good faith is doing something could be good, could be bad, but it was with good intention. You understand? That's what Saint Jojo is. He's the, he's the latter. He's the second one. That's why I really am connecting with Saint Jojo so much. If, sure, the story may be dragging a bit in the beginning, but I, I promise you the next chapter would be actually pretty wild. I haven't thought of the mechanics yet though, but I will, I will, I will. My idea for it is wild. He fights Cthulhu. <laughs> but whatever. Nah. Anyway. Um, yeah. The point of that is that Saint Jojo is essentially a character mirror of what it means to accept rejection. That's what Aurora is, I mean, not me, Saint Jojo. Aurora is something that, well, technically, yeah, Saint Jojo as well. He was rejected, right? Rejected by the world. And how did he handle it? He handled it actually pretty amazingly. He, he didn't come back for revenge. He came back to forgive everyone and to, to trick everyone into rebelling against Aurora. Trick, trick, quote unquote, because Aurora's doing the real tricking here. She's clearly evil. She changed the norms and culture of the world into believing that evil is normal. It's not. And for Saint Jojo, eh, he's just doing his job. So he's not really that good either. But at least he's genuine about it, I guess. He wants to forget the past and he's trying to move on. The point of Aurora, why is, why is her beyond called Hey Jude? Hey Jude, don't make it bad, right? Make a sad song, take a sad song and make it better. Why? Because clearly, so sorry for that. Someone called in the wrong moment. I asked them not to call this time, but they did. Anyway, doesn't matter. Forgive me for that. Clearly, this is what Saint Jojo is trying to sing to Aurora. Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song and make it better. Because clearly, Saint Jojo is trying to make Aurora's sad, tragic song of rejection to something better. Just, just to be a better person. Not be toxic about it. She handled rejection really badly. That could have been me. Get it? And then there's Annalisa, who he chose way back in the past. He chose to be faithful to. Clearly, she's not a good person either. None of them are good people. The point of this is like it's supposed to reflect a lot from the Dune series. Or at least the two Dune movies I watched and the Dune series my grandpa used to tell me when I was a kid, which I didn't understand. But yeah, that's the point. 
They're not, they're morally complex. They are not good guys, unlike the ones in Jazz Fusion. Jazz Fusion is about optimism despite the chaos. Well, the gospel truth, part three, is not that. It's essentially about having chaos despite the hope, despite the optimism. They have chaos in here, and they have to work on it. You know, it's the reverse of everything it is. Next time I'll be talking about the jazz fusion because this was a good talk, you know. And thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you. I'm so tired.